Hi everyone. This lecture on mentoring skills is recorded for the HP246 or Mentoring in Health Professions Education course by the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions. This is recorded by Dr. M. E. Nicolen, the faculty in charge. Should you want to use this material for education or training purposes, you may ask permission by emailing her at eddicolen at up.edu.ph. And here are the learning outcomes. At the end of the pre-recorded lecture, students shall be able to first analyze the various mentoring skills necessary for a successful mentoring relationship and rate their readiness in the practice of the skills discussed as a mentor and at the same time a mentee. In our previous discussion, we mentioned that chemistry between the mentor and the mentee is important to be able to achieve a successful mentor-mentee relationship. But the question is, is it all chemistry? Yes, chemistry is important, but mentoring skills are also important to be able to nurture that chemistry between the mentor and the mentee. Though I personally believe that mentoring is a gift, it's some kind of an inherent passion. I also believe that mentoring skills can be learned and these are observable behaviors that a mentor and a mentee can perform that indicates how well you or they can do something. Phillips Jones, in her book, Skills for Successful Mentoring, published in 2003, designed this mentoring skills model. There are mentee-specific skills. There are also mentor-specific skills. And there are what we call shared core skills. Now, let's go over these skills one by one. The first core mentoring skill is active listening. Active listening is characterized by using encouraging responses such as, it's okay, keep talking, or I'm listening. It's also characterized by watching your body language by showing encouraging gestures like nodding your head to show affirmation or holding one's hand or perhaps a pat on the back. It's allowing the person to express himself or herself without being interrupted. It's also characterized by showing interest or interest in what they are saying and by summarizing the highlights of what the mentee have mentioned or what the mentee have talked about. Avoid the temptation of talking about yourself, your experiences, and avoid the giving of immediate solutions to their problems. You may suggest, yes, but let them choose and make the final decision. What you can do is to guide them in discerning the pros and cons of every alternative solution to their issues or problems. Another core mentoring skill needed is trust. Trust between the mentor and the mentee. Confidentiality of information shared must always be respected. You may ask permission first if you can share the information to the proper authorities. You should know when to share or when not to share. There are some instances when breach of confidentiality is allowed this is in the case of extreme reasons, especially when security and health is at stake. Trust your judgment. Furthermore, be humble to admit your mistakes and respect each other even if there are disagreements. Agree to disagree and be responsible and accountable for what happens in the mentoring relationship. The mentoring relationship should be encouraging by sincerely affirming efforts as much as possible publicly, 
but just be cautious that you are not overdoing it. Baka naman masana yung menti or lumaki yung ulo ng menti. So, sakto lang na tama lang. Celebrate even the small successes because these celebrations serve as encouragement for both the mentor and the mentee. Right from the very beginning, both of you, the mentor and the mentee, should be able to identify your goals, what matters to you most, your strengths and your values, and together journey towards your desired goal in your mentoring relationship. Sabi nga nila, walang iwanan. No? We don't leave your mentee, you don't leave your mentee hanging. Should you need to end your mentoring relationship, communicate your decision and sincerely explain your reason and assure him or her that somebody will take over your place. Make sure that as a mentor, you provide opportunities for further learning. Remember that mentoring is meant to supplement classroom instructions and therefore, the mentoring experience should add to the knowledge, attitudes, and skills that they learn from school. Again, avoid homilizing and comparing your time with their time. Be inspiring. Simply put, be nice. Don't be rude. Watch out your language, your gestures. Provide or facilitate inspiring experiences that will allow them to open up and to trust. Do not dictate on what to do. Rather, allow them to discern and discover their uniqueness as a person. We do not aim to produce people who are exactly like us. We should know when to affirm and to praise. But we should also give corrective feedback when necessary. Remember to go to a nice, quiet, and a private place. Allow the person to recall that which happened and do not proceed until he or she doesn't recall the incident. If not, there's no point proceeding. Sayang lang ang effort. That's why it is helpful that the corrective feedback should be given immediately when necessary. Okay? Although sometimes we need to give our mentees time to reflect about what they have done, now that something is not right, that's the time for them to clarify their values, to resolve the dissonance you know, before we call their attention or before we give or provide the corrective feedback. Now, be careful with your words. Be tactful. And remember this, do not bring a mob with you. Focus on the I. For example, you say, I feel, I think, and not we feel or we think. Then, communicate the effect or ano yung naramdaman mo no? dun sa error na kanyang ginawa or dun sa mistake na kanyang ginawa. Like for example, you say, I felt anxious or I was scared or I was sad or I was sorry. I, 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 I was worried. No? Do not say, you're such a bad person or you're nasty. Again, reminder, do not attack the whole person. Love the person, but hate or condemn the sin. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. That's what they say. Now, another skill is be proactive uh, and teach them to be such. Allow them to decide, to own their choices, but teach them to be responsible with their choices. Help them to discern. I mentioned this earlier already. Now, how do we discern? This, uh, this is just a peek. 
no, on how to uh, do the assignment. First, get a piece of paper. Do not do it mentally because our minds you know, may deceive us. Now, write all the alternative solutions or decisions that can possibly be done. Let's say from A to B to C. Then write all the pros and the cons of each possible alternative. For example, for alternative A, no? what are the pros and cons of each alternative? Write them down. And then after all possible pluses and minuses are written, go over your paper. Go over what you have written. Then go over each alternative. No? Each alternative that you have identified. And count. No? Bilangin mo ilan ang positive, ilan ang negative. So while you are going over them, ask yourself the following questions. Is this negotiable? Or is this non-negotiable? Is this a yes or a no? Or am I ready to let go of this? Yes or no? Am I ready to sacrifice this? Yes or no? Am I willing to face the consequences if I do this? Yes or no? In other words, you try to deliberate. Nakausapin mo yung sarili mo. No, kaya ko na ba itong let go? Okay lang ba ito? No? You deliberate with yourself. And then, pray. Then after, after praying, then you choose. See? If you're able to teach this discernment process to your mentees, I think it's going to be a big help to them. Next is provide opportunities for them to grow, hone their talents, and discover their passion and dreams by introducing them to people who can help them. Do not be possessive of your mentees. Now, as you mentioned in your presentation, in some of your presentations, no, remarks like, ay, mga anak ko kasi yan. No? Huwag yung pakailaman. Huwag yung silang pakailaman. Mga alaga ko yan. Mga baby ko yan. Mga anak-anakan ko yan. And so forth and so on. Now, these remarks are not helpful at all. Now, bring them to your presentations or lectures. Recommend them if there are opportunities such as internships, trainings, etc. Either as participants or in the case of the graduate school, perhaps as lecturers or speakers. But you can only do this when you are confident that they can do the task. Otherwise, sabi nga natin, ikaw ang masisira. No? Pangalan mo ang nakataya. So these are the critical mentoring skills. And now we move to the critical skills for mentees. If you have an opportunity to choose your mentor, choose wisely. Do your own research. Check their CV or bio data. No? Check their profile. Stock niyo siya ng konti. No? Go over the skills no? that we mentioned and ask yourself whether they possess those skills or not. No? Parang sa pagkakakilala mo sa kanya, kaya ba niyang makinig? Hmm? Kahit sa tingin mo, re-respetuhin ka niya. Sa tingin mo, may privacy and so forth and so on. No? And it is important that you're, you choose someone whom you think can help you personally and professionally. Someone whom you think, no? Someone who can help you meet your goals and your expectations. If you do not have the privilege of choosing, for example, in schools where uh, the director of the mentoring program is the one assigning, no, I think it is your responsibility. No? Or, uh, no, I, 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 I'm sorry, it is the responsibility of the one in charge of mentoring to appropriately match the mentors and the mentees given specific criteria. Now, as a mentee, make sure that you conscious, conscientiously rather follow the requirements of your mentor. Do your readings if there are readings, write your journals or reflection papers, and submit them 
on time. And of course, apply these learnings. Next is, show initiative. Magpakabibo ka, no? pero wag naman sobrang bibo. Dapat sakto lang. No? Make an effort to go beyond what is expected of you. Do not hesitate to ask questions and clarifications. Be open to corrective feedback. When you feel you need more data or information to be able to make an enlightened decision, ask. Remember, when in doubt, don't. But consult appropriate people, including your mentor or mentors. Keep the engagement smoothly going. Submit requirements on time. Follow suggestions. Now, in case you want to break the engagement as a, as a mentee, provide a generous and charitable feedback to your mentor. No? Kahit naman pa paano may pinagsamahan kayo, so maging mabait ka naman as a mentee. No? He or she needs that affirmation plus it serves as a feedback for him. Ano ba yung kailangan niya pang i-improve? Or ano ba yung kailangan niya i-continue? No? Then, explain why you wanted to discontinue. Inform the proper people in charge of the mentoring program. If there's a form to be accomplished for that purpose, then fill it out for purposes of documentation. Lastly, manage the relationship. I think the mentor deserves to be told about the effect of your engagement to you personally and at the same time professionally. Our goal is to make your relationship lasting and continue even after graduation. Our hope is that we end our mentoring relationships with good memories. Other skills that we can consider are interviewing skills or asking appreciative questions. And I believe since we are already familiar with AI, let's practice doing it. Serrat in 2009 said, a question is only as good as the answer it evokes. And questions thus contribute to success or failure across different contexts. So, the questions we ask matter a lot. If we ask positive questions, we also get positive answers. Whitney et al. defines appreciative question as that, no, that seeks to uncover and bring out the best in a person, a situation, or an organization. So here's a guide on how you can use AI as a tool for reflection and growth in mentoring. It specifically gives you a guide on how to proceed with your interview, before the interview or conversation, how to begin the conversation, continue, and conclude the conversation. I'm giving you a few minutes to read the slide. Where's the continuation? According to Whitney, one way of keeping what we call asking appreciative questions is by staying curious. Be like a child. Show some curiosity and excitement in every story told. Like according to Eleanor Roosevelt, she said, I think at a child's birth, if a mother could ask a fairy godmother to endow it with the most useful gift, that would be curiosity. 
sana daw laging nandun yung curious tayong malaman. No? Parang, ano ba yun? May pagkamarites ba? Ano? To keep that marites attitude, no? kailangan daw yun no? in asking appreciative questions. Why? No? So going on further, these are additional tips in asking appreciative questions. I, again, I reiterate, use the 4D cycle questions of discover, dream, design, and destiny. Allow collaboration and human participation because this makes the relationship more meaningful. Use appreciative storytelling, no? a methodology in AI because it builds relationships. And AI questions stimulate the imagination Uh, invite perspective taking, encouraging compassion, and at the same time, empathy. Now, another skill that we need to learn as mentors is what we call the counseling skills. Again, these are listening, uh, empathy, the ability to see with the eyes of another, to listen with the ears of another, and to feel with the heart of another. Genuineness. Be honest. Be yourself. Be comfortable. Then, unconditional positive regard. You need to have an endless amount of kindness, no? expression of caring. Your goal is not to argue, but to gently encourage them to see things through the scope of reality. Then we have concreteness. Stay focused on specific and relevant facts and feelings. And to avoid getting off topic, making sweeping statements, or talking about the counselor rather than the client, or talking about yourself rather than the client. Open questions. Ask open-ended questions so that the mentee can explore his or her thoughts. No? Avoid uh, asking questions that are answerable by yes or no. Then we have counselor self-disclosure. It is safer, of course, not to self-disclose unless for some reason there is no other way to inspire the mentee to open up. Then interpretation that you're able to provide a new perspective, provoke thoughts or feelings, or present an explanation for behaviors. Interpretations may help patients connect things that they have compartmentalized, reveal patterns or themes, and it can offer a fresh way of thinking. But do not overuse because the mentor may appear to be accusatory or judgmental. Okay? Next, information giving and removing obstacles to change. Humbly present data, facts, wisdom, resources, or answer to questions. Together with your mentee, identify possible problems that may be hindering their growth process and think through possible solutions and alternatives. Another equally important skill in mentoring is processing skills. Processing of feelings or emotions, processing of issues and situations. What is process and what is it to process? A process as a series or is a series of actions or operations taken toward achieving a particular end. And to process is to perform a series of operations on something in order to change or to preserve it. So the ultimate goal of processing is to change the emotion or feelings or to preserve it. Processing emotions or feelings is about learning to understand, make sense of, and deal with your own emotions or feelings in a productive way. Our mentees, and even us, no, mentors, may be disconnected with our feelings or emotions because we are used to suppressing them or rationalizing or justifying them. 
But the thing is, there comes a point when suppressing, rationalizing, and justifying your emotions are no longer possible. They become unbearable. Yung sinasabi nilang, bigla na lang puputok kasi hindi na kayang i-contain. Or pwede rin para lang siyang anino na hinahabol ka. And since these are there in your subconscious, they become they come alive in our sleep and sometimes appear in our dreams and they become nightmares. Processing of feelings or emotions, huh? Issues are not easy, no, both on the part of the mentor and the mentee. It's not easy to process feelings and emotions. It requires some degree of readiness and it may require a longer period of time depending on the seriousness of the emotion or the issue and of course the readiness of the mentee. One way of processing emotions or feelings or issues is through the practice of mindfulness following these steps. First, Identification and awareness of emotions and feelings. Recognize the signs. Pakiramdaman mo yung sarili mo. Second, ability to stay with and accept the feelings in order to process or you have to label your feelings. Name it and tame it. Sabi nga nila. Then understanding why you are having that feeling. Ganito yung nararamdaman ko. No? Addressing the emotions. Process as you go or make it a habit. Huwag nang patagalin pa. Otherwise, madadagdagan ng madadagdagan, madadagdagan yung issue na yan. Compartmentalize as needed and recognize when you are ruminating. Now, the following questions might help. How am I feeling like this? Where is this reaction or feeling coming from? What triggered this feeling? What can I do about this feeling? What do I need to do? Do I need to talk to someone? How can I resolve this? Okay, so these are just some questions that perhaps could help you in processing your feelings or processing the feelings or emotions of your own mentees. Now that we have discussed the core mentoring skills, the critical skills of the mentor, the interview skills or asking AI questions, counseling and processing, I want you to pause this video and get a piece of paper and a pen and assess your potential to be a mentor and at the same time a mentor. Okay, are you ready? Be honest in rating yourself. Then total your scores. Are you done? Okay, in the next slide, you will see the interpretation of your scores. So, if your score is 16 to 20, you have excellent core skills. You could coach others and concentrate improvement efforts on fine-tuning your style. If your scores are between 11 to 15, you're very good. No? You have very good skills. Continue to polish those skills that will make you even more effective and desirable as a mentor or a mentee. If your score is between 6 to 10, you have adequate core skills. Work on your less developed skills in order to have better relationships. Now, if your score is between 5 or below, you will benefit from coaching and practice on core skills. Acquire training or coaching and under, and, uh, under observe, uh, and observe others who have strong skills. So now that you have discovered where you are good at and what needs some polishing in terms of the core skills, 
we move to the next slide. So once again, I invite you to get your paper, paper and pen and rate yourself according to the following. Okay, are you done? So look at the interpretation of your scores. If your score is between 20 to 25, you have excellent mentor skills. You could coach others, concentrate improvement efforts on fine-tuning your style with particular mentees. If it's 15 to 19, you have very good skills. And if it's 10 to 14, you have adequate mentor skills. And if it's nine or under, you will benefit from coaching. Now we move to the next. Again, get your pen and paper and answer the following. So here's the interpretation of your scores. Before I end, please pause the video again. Jot down some notes, keywords, or learnings to summarize the pre-recorded lecture and write them in the discussion boards of our Canvas. When you are done, resume watching the video. I hope that this pre-recorded lecture deepened your experience from the mentoring simulation activity, affirmed your realizations and insights, and added to the knowledge that you have already in mind. I would like to end with my personal reflection after preparing this lecture. Mentoring is the giving of oneself. As we consume ourselves, we realize our wholeness. The more we turn to others, the more we recognize our nothingness. But it's in our nothingness that we fulfill our gigantic mission, the journey with the people entrusted to our care. In the process of their becoming, we allow them to multiply us. At night before going to bed, we can finally say, what I am is God's gift to me. What I become is my gift to God.